Good afternoon and welcome to All About Animals. I'm Sherry Gratitor and, uh, well, I have two guests here. I have Carol Euster, who is the founder and what would, what did we say, director, general? Ex executive director. Executive director of Canine Reading Buddies of the North Shore, which is a program using dogs to facilitate reading with kids mm -hmm. and more than reading, mm -hmm. not just reading. Exactly. Okay, so what is it about? Uh, so the definition is that we're an animal assisted children's literacy program based on the North Shore, uh, servicing the North Shore communities. Uh, we initially started out, we started in 2007 and uh, the mission was to work with children in the schools who were at-risk readers uh, to motivate them to want to read, uh, having them read more often paired with a canine reading buddy team uh, for consistency throughout the year. They were visited weekly and, um, and uh, the more they read, the more fluent of a reader they became. Uh, and so we initially started out in the grade schools. Uh, as the years went on and our volunteers um, started to become retired school teachers, we ended up kind of morphing out into the middle schools. There was a, a need and we had the, the right volunteers to be able to accommodate that, that need. Uh, so we have since uh, been working in uh, District 112, middle school as well, uh, Elm Place District middle, 112 middle is Highland Park. Is Highland Park. Uh, and so for reading, specifically working with at-risk readers, um, that's the district we work in. And as far as um, motivating kids to want to read for fun, we are at North Shore libraries like Deerfield Library, uh, Highwood, Wilmette, Glencoe, Northbrook we just added this last year. Uh, and. Um, and, and that's to motivate kids to want to come in to read. Uh, it makes it uh, fun when they can read to a dog that's a trained therapy dog at the library and they get a custom bookmark with the dog's picture on it and a sticker that says, I read to Mickey, my canine reading buddy. Um, so that's, that's our focus with the reading, wanting, helping kids. Uh, okay, and I'm gonna stop you for a minute. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you, why is it that reading to a dog is more beneficial to a kid than reading to a teacher or to another kid? Well, uh, just being in the same room as a dog can lower blood pressure and reduce anxieties. Uh, studies show that. Um, you're seeing more and more that dogs are going to um, provide uh, comfort where there's been a crisis. Uh, and it's the same uh, reasoning that works there, works with a child who is a struggling reader. They're able to read in a safe, non-judgmental environment. The dog doesn't judge them. The dog just looks at them or looks at the book or falls asleep while they're being pet by the child, which is relaxing for both the dog and the child. Uh, and they look forward to it because there's nothing more uh, interesting in a school day. Well, there could be interesting things in a school day that are just as interesting. Yeah, but, but not to say that's not interesting. But, um, but when the dog comes in the school, that's a change in the school day for everybody. From the you know, moment that dog walks into the school, passing staff and, and finding their way to the student, um, it, it's a change, something different. And that's the motivating factor, makes it interesting for the child. Uh, versus reading to an adult, which is something they they're used to doing. That's still a different feeling than reading to a dog. Well, I, I would assume that reading to an adult, the adult's going to correct the kid when the kid makes a mistake. Well, we would assume. Now, with a dog, we would say something like, you know, Mickey doesn't know what that word means. Um, maybe we can look it up in the dictionary and explain it to Mickey. Or Mickey isn't sure how he would pronounce that word. Maybe we could work on that together to help Mickey understand how to pronounce the word. So it's always the focus is off the child. We kind of like channel the dog uh, to help the child. Learn. And you're putting the child in a position of superiority where he can help the dog. Right, exactly, and the child becomes the teacher and the dog becomes the student, exactly. And the kid feels good about himself. Feels confident, and the teachers, at the end of the year, they complete a survey, and uh, typically what we'll see is children that were shy about reading, and, and, the, and it's also uh, information comes back from our team members as well, that the child children um, start to read more loudly. They read with um, you know inflection uh, and expression, uh, whereas in the beginning of the year, they might have you know barely read loud enough for the um, team member to hear. They would say something like, 
You know, Mickey's, Mickey doesn't have good hearing, so maybe if you could speak just a little louder, <laughs> Mickey could hear you, and um, that helps. Sure. In other words, instead of correcting the child, you put the child in a position where he can correct himself to help the dog. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, that has to make the kid feel really good about himself. It helps them feel more confident, and then that reflects in their school day with how they interact with other children. It affects their attendance level. They, there's less absenteeism because they don't want to miss the day that they're going to be reading to the dog. Uh, and so it, it, it's the whole person is, is affected. So now you've grown from when the first time I talked to you, I think there were about four dogs involved in this program. Oh, the very first time. That was yeah, a, long time, a ago. long time ago. Yeah. So that was back in 2007. Uh, that's, that's right. There were five members uh, and so four others, including me. Uh, we started out as a group of people who had an idea, and it turned out that as we started to um, go into the school system after having uh, changed the Highland Park City Ordinance to allow uh, therapy dogs into the school system, uh, people saw our teams in the schools and wanted to know how they could do what we were doing. Mickey is holding your hand. I yes. love it. Yes. And so... Um, and so we began to grow organically over the years since 2007 and uh, realized that we needed to become a nonprofit. So in 2008, we um, became a, a nonprofit, uh, a 501c3. And as the years went on, in 2012, we actually create, created our own training program for the person to become a canine reading buddy uh, team member so that we would have a uh, consistent uh, uh, professionalism and quality every time somebody would walk in to service a facility they the um, th there was th there, there was a consistency in, in how we do things so since 2012 um, we have started we have uh, run training classes that are multimedia interactive role-playing training classes out of the Highland Park Police Department Wow yeah so we've actually we just ran a class um, in November of nine students uh, it, it, it makes a difference uh, when you can actually, you know, when, when, when the principals or the library staff, they know they're getting a canine reading buddy team, they know the quality and the level of professionalism they're getting when that and they know team walks prepared. through the door. And they know they're prepared. Okay, so you're doing training programs for the adults. What's required for the dogs? So um, all dogs are reg registered therapy dogs. Uh, we refer to Alliance of Therapy Dogs based out of Cheyenne, Wyoming, for their testing. So uh, the, um, the, the, the handler is insured after passing the test for $5 million liability. Uh, we refer to uh, various, uh, several different dog trainers for therapy dog uh, training classes or uh, uh, just if they're working on a behavior uh, for, for um, that as well uh, to help people whose dogs might not need a full class just to tweak some behaviors. Um, and uh, and what do they have to know to do to be a therapy dog? So they need to uh, know their basic obedience commands: um, sit down, sit, stay calm, down, yeah, all mm -hmm. that, right? And uh, be non-aggressive. Uh, you know, I, I could step on uh, Mickey's tail; he might not like it, but we wouldn't know he wouldn't like it because he probably he, the most he would do is get up and move. Mm -hmm. um, so they have to be able to. Um, um, uh, function in a chaotic, noisy environment without being stressed and out. And the as strange well. kid has to be able to walk up to the dog and throw their arms around his neck without the dog being terrified and snapping. Of course. Right. Although, although we always stress that the handler is the advocate for their dog, so that situation shouldn't happen because the advocate should always the, the handler should always be aware of their surroundings and be able to prevent somebody from just rushing up to the dog and, and hugging them that way. Uh, because, uh, you know, first and foremost, we want to keep our dogs safe as well. Sure. And that keeps everybody safe. And they are dogs. And they are dogs, exactly. Um, I do want to just add a couple things. Uh, I think we have a couple minutes left. We do. We are at District 112 Preschool. Uh, we've been in the preschool program since we started in 2007. Uh, where we teach children how to safely approach a dog. We're there monthly in all the classrooms. Uh, and the kids um, always practice. We read to them, and then they practice coming up to us to ask in English or Spanish, may I pet your dog? And then they come around, they, they let the dog sniff their hand, and they come around to the side, and they pet uno, dos, tres, or one, two, three, and then they get a sticker with that dog's picture on it. Um, that's been great because the kids, you know, learn 
how how to to ask and wait Absolutely. for the answer that Absolutely. yes it is okay to pet this dog. Um, something new this last couple of years is we're at the Schuler program in Highland Park High School where we do stress relief clinics. The Schuler program is um, a first generation college bound children students um, that test into uh, the program uh, in eighth grade to be in the program ninth through twelfth, and then they have mentors and tutors to take them from college prep courses all the way through to you know, interviewing and, and um, visiting colleges. Mm -hmm. um, so we're there, we partnered with the Schuler program to provide stress relief clinics for their students. Uh, and so that's something new and we're very proud of that. We also do stress relief clinics at the Navy base. We're wow. at Great Lakes uh, Navy base and we were just there in November. We'll be back in January to see the sailors and Glenbrook North High School for Stress Relief. So we do a variety of things from the preschool through the high school to community outreach where there's a need. If we have the resources to fill that need, we'll do our best to, 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 to come out. And I'm assuming that you're looking for two things. You're looking for people to get involved in the program. Well, what, what we just started, we're always looking for qualified volunteers, and what we just started is a, 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 a seminar, a recruiting seminar, and we're going to have one at Wilmette Library on March 11th from 2 to 3 p.m., and uh, it'll be in the auditorium, and it's um, in that one, one hour seminar, it, it will discuss, we'll share with a PowerPoint presentation what it takes to become a canine reading buddy team and what it takes to become a therapy dog team and set people up with the relationships. Uh, we'll also have some therapy dogs there as well. We did that se recruiting seminar at Deerfield Library with great success. Uh, and people want to know, they want to get answers, but it's, it's hard to put it all together. So this way you can be in one place and get the answers to all your questions. And I'm assuming that you always need donations and funding. You can always use donations. Um, you can find us on Facebook, uh, um, or Canine Reading Buddies in the North Shore, or you can find us, uh, our website is www.caninereadingbuddies.org. Okay, these people are doing some really terrific work. And if you'd like to be involved, if you can be involved physically, and you have a pet, that's great. If you can't, then you can certainly be involved financially. But Carol, we're out of time. Out so of time. I want to thank you for coming mm -hmm. in, I really do. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank all of you for watching it, and we will now take you to Save a Pet and show you some of the dogs and cats waiting there for homes.